This video is brought to you by Raycon. I don't really love war slash history films. I have no better reason other than they just don't really interest me. Have you seen my taste? That, that just isn't me. So you could probably imagine how unenthused I was going into Ridley Scott's new historical epic, Napoleon. But I came out liking this film um, a lot more than I thought I would, especially considering how lukewarm the reviews have been. And that said, I had to make a video about this, as I feel the need to defend what I consider to be a pretty good time. Napoleon is the story of, well, Napoleon, as in THE Napoleon. It tells the story of how he came to power, told mostly through his relationship with his wife Josephine, stars one of our favorite weird guys, Joaquin Phoenix, as well as Vanessa Kirby. Let's start with those two because it's probably the one aspect most people will agree with me on. I thought Joaquin Phoenix was good. It's the second movie he's been in this year about a guy who really needs to come, and he delivers. If you haven't already heard, the rumors are true. He has some really funny moments in this film. Moments that, unlike House of Gucci, I can confidently say were supposed to be funny. Some great lines in here about boats and lamb chops. It's, it's so great. I also have to mention that Ridley Scott has so far been responsible for the two most ridiculous sex scenes I've seen in the movies this decade. The first being the classic Lady Gaga and Adam Driver scene in House of Gucci. If you haven't seen it, you haven't lived. And the second being Joaquin Phoenix channeling a small puppy humping a chair in this film. It's truly so... <laughs> It's so ridiculous, especially the way they abruptly cut to it, but I think it's amazing. It's cinema. Vanessa Kirby, on that note, also really great. Her performance was subdued, but had a sort of commanding quality to it that complemented Phoenix's often insecure and, well, small approach. Now, the film, if you didn't know, it clocks in at two hours and 38 minutes. It's been quite the year for legendary filmmakers really taking their damn time with their movies, and this is no exception. Whereas with Flower Moon and Oppenheimer, people, including myself, rave about how you barely feel the runtime, Napoleon has been met with different reactions, some calling it a slog, others saying it was totally meant to be four hours and had to be cut. And I will say, I didn't find the length to be an issue at all. I do agree it was totally supposed to be at least an hour longer. There's a lot of stuff here that could have benefited from some space to breathe, specifically some of the more somber and intimate moments. But if you're worried about the runtime, I would say simply don't be. <laughs> Wear cozy pants and enjoy some time at the theater, because yes, if you can, you should definitely see this thing in theaters. I'll admit, another reason I wasn't totally jumping up and down for this film's release was that based on the trailer footage, it just didn't look very pretty. Similar to Scott's last two films, The Last Duel and House of Dookie, there was something really dull and sterile about the look of this film. But seeing it on the big screen, I have to say, completely different experience. God damn, does this thing look great up there. All the battle sequences are unsurprisingly big and booming. The candlelight scenes look really incredible. Sure, there are some scenes where I wish the saturation was turned up just a little bit, but having a better sense of what the tone of this film is, I can sort of understand where they're coming from with this approach. The sound, I can't lie to you, it isn't really anything special. I mean, it gets the job done, I cannot sit here and make up some bullshit reasons why the sound is something otherworldly. It sounds good and that's all it really needed to do. The classical music cues work as well, for as played out as they are, there are some needle drops here and there that go unnecessarily hard and really elevate these moments. The choices are maybe a little run of the mill and played out, but I will take these more traditional and expected choices over another period piece trying to modernize itself with trendy indie rock songs. I did not mean for that to sound like a dig on Sofia Coppola, I just like seeing a movie treat itself with so much sincerity for a change. Moving on. Which really gets to the core of what I enjoyed about this movie, the sincerity. Ridley Scott these last few years has seemed like one of the few filmmakers we've had unwilling to adapt to current filmmaking trends and having the resources to conjure up big budget films that feel like they're from another time. He's making them like they used to, to put it simply. And I thought The Last Duel was decent, House of Gucci was fun in a bad way, but both felt hard to take seriously, or I guess they, they just felt a little disposable. I do not think about either of those movies very often, and it's because they felt as though they only got halfway there with me emotionally. To be blunt, they just seemed a little out of touch in a way that just simply does not resonate with a lot of moviegoers today, and that's probably why they didn't go the lengths they seemed like they should have gone. Napoleon is different. I know there's a case to be made that this film is just as disposable, pointless even, some might say, but to that I say, no? Napoleon is the same kind of old school style of film in that it feels at some points like pure cinematic escapism. These battle scenes really are quite breathtaking and feel so effortlessly directed, he makes it look easy. There isn't any over stylization, nothing worth making a gif over. It's entirely focused on locking you in. The slow build of the music, the passionate choreography, the subtly rhythmic editing, it all works 
together to completely absorb you in the way a great movie does. That's not to say there aren't some really stunning images here and there. I, I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but I thought the red blood entering the icy blue water with the white snow resembling the French flag was a pretty, pretty crazy image. That seems like a stretch now that I've said it out loud, but I'm, g I'm gonna leave it in there anyway. There are also certain shots of Phoenix slumped in different chairs that look like something out of Barry Lyndon. It's easy to call any period piece like this something that looks like Barry Lyndon, but I'm serious, they, they really do. Any shot that contains what feels like hundreds of men on horses is a sight to see. I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw a film go for it like that without a bunch of CGI. And even if a lot of it is CGI, I, tr I can't confirm. It looks pretty damn good to me. I also am not someone who will just call a movie good if it's fun. There are tons of fun movies that I cannot necessarily say are good movies. I don't think Napoleon packs a punch emotionally or justifies itself as being the most necessary movie of the year or anything like that. If anything, it does feel kind of unnecessary in the grand scheme of things, but I do think it's not as completely pointless as people make it out to be. Just on the surface, I find the film to explore one of the most extreme examples of someone in power, using that power oftentimes uncontrollably to fill some other emotional void in his life. That is a pretty by-the-books theme, and it certainly isn't anything we haven't seen or heard before, but I do think Scott tells it in a way that's really engrossing and fun. I do think at the end of the day, my frustration for Scott's last two movies being lackluster came from a place of wishing movies like this could still hit hard and resonate with people. Top Gun Maverick aside, it just feels like we haven't had a film like this in a while. I wanted to root for them, because I respect the place they came from, but they just weren't all that interesting. But Napoleon is not only interesting, it's also riveting as hell. It makes the case for movies like this still being able to exist today. And I think, to be honest, a movie about a weird little guy making crazy decisions because he has too much power does hit today, or at least it did for me. Listen, I don't want to talk this thing up like it's the greatest thing in the world. It does have its flaws. It does feel a little rushed at times. I, I thought the English was a little distracting. It could be a little bit more saturated, and who knows how historically accurate a lot of this is. But I can confidently and unapologetically say I was thoroughly entertained by this and satisfied in such a way that I have to give it some credit. I thought this was a good movie, but certainly not as good as this week's sponsor, Raycon. Thanks to their everyday earbuds, their everyday headphones, plus their new line of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech products, Raycon has really made a name for themselves in the premium audio space. I can see why. They're, they're offering you premium tech products at a great price. They've earned tens of thousands of five-star reviews, and they make the purchasing process super easy with easy and free returns, free shipping, and buy now, pay later options. I personally love them myself. I, I use them all the time when I'm working out and, and climbing on some walls. I can use them to lock in with their noise isolation feature, but I can also use them to, you know, be aware of my surroundings and stay safe with their awareness mode. Thanks to these features, as well as their comfortable fit, they're really perfect for any situation, whether it's working out, getting some work done at home, or just listening to music. And what's really exciting is that Raycon's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales are happening. And you can save even more because Raycon is offering limited time bundles. They have their fitness audio kit, as well as their everyday audio kit. I should note that these are Raycon's biggest holiday discounts ever, and they're only available for one week, so make sure to shop by November 27th. Shop Raycon's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales for their biggest holiday discounts yet. Go to buyraycon.com slash Karsten to get 50% off site-wide.